In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this logo animation for Final Cut Pro using Apple Motion. Now, this logo animation is massively inspired by today's sponsor, Envato Elements, and they actually have hundreds of different logo animations pre-built for Final Cut Pro. More on them at the very end of this video, but also if you're a patron, you'll be able to download this exact logo animation that we create today and actually put in your own logo for your own videos. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we are gonna select the Final Cut title. Then moving up to the top right, we're gonna to wanna to set our duration to something short. I like around four seconds. Now you can leave your preset at 4K or 1080, whatever you prefer to work with, as well as your frame rate, you can leave that at whatever you like. From there, we are going to push open. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and delete the type text here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rename this group to be title background and we're gonna to need to use this a bit later. But first what I'm gonna do is go ahead and lock it down using that lock on the right side. Then we can right click and create a new group and this group we're just gonna call circles. With that group selected, we can come down to our shapes, click this down arrow and select circle. Now that we have the circle shape, go ahead and create it anywhere in this space and hold shift so that it is perfectly symmetrical. Then from there, we'll go to the left side and find our inspector. From here, we will disable the outline. Then going to our geometry settings, I wanna change the radius over to 500. After that, we can go into our properties and find the position parameter. If you click on this down arrow, we can actually select reset parameters. So now that circle is directly in the center. Now we can actually start animating this circle. Finding these scale parameters under our properties, we can actually set this down to 0%. We can click to add a keyframe, then we can move forward about 12 frames and set this to something like 500%. That is going to actually make it scale up so large that it fills the entire frame. So if I push play, we now have this really basic animation of the circle taking place. Now from here, we can duplicate the circle to get some other colors. So with that circle selected, I'm gonna push Command D and that will create a circle copy. From there, we can select it down here in the timeline. If I push command and right arrow, that will actually allow me to move it over a single frame. So I'm gonna move this over about four frames. One, two, three, four. Now, if I select this circle copy, we can go ahead and go into the style settings and change the fill color over to the color that we like. I'm gonna just select this red color, which is kind of similar to the YouTube red color. So if we push play, we should now have a red and white circle. Now, if you don't like the timing, you can actually move these around on your timeline to get it exactly where you want it. So I'm actually gonna move this over two more frames. Let's do about six frames out. Perfect, that's looking pretty nice. From there, I'm gonna rename this circle to be red and I'm going to rename this white circle to be white. Let's go ahead and push Command D again to duplicate the red circle and we'll go ahead and rename this to be gray. And from there, we'll change our fill color over to this dark gray color. You can set that up however you like. Selecting your gray color, we're gonna push Command right bracket six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that should set it out about six frames. So now we have the white, red, and gray. Let's go ahead and do one more. With the gray selected, we'll push Command D again, and this time we can set this to off-white, and now we can set our color to be white, and I'm going to actually drag it down just a little bit so that it's more of an off-white color. Selecting that off-white circle, Command right arrow to move it over one, two, three, four, five, six. That will move it six keyframes. So now we should have all of these colors popping out just like so. Now for the final circle, I actually want it to grow a little bit slower. So if we come to the right side, we can select our keyframe editor. You can also achieve that with Command-8. And selecting the top keyframes, we can click and drag those over to the right hand side. I've also held down Shift so that it locks it to this axis. So that's gonna slow it down a little bit. And we can select both of those keyframes, right click and select Ease Both, so it has a nice eased animation. So if we push play, we should have all these circles popping in really, really nicely. So now that we have this basic animation, it's time to bring in our logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and close down this particular group, right click and select new group. And this time we'll just call this the logo group. 
And from there, we can push Command I to import, and I'll go ahead and just locate my logo. From there, we'll push import. So now we have this logo in place. It's definitely far too large, so I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this down to 20%. Let's go ahead and move forward in the timeline to where we want it to start to appear, somewhere right in here at frame 24 for me on a 60 frame timeline. I'm gonna push I, and that will actually trim the logo by setting the in point there. And so now the logo won't appear until it's right here. Now from here, let's go ahead and animate it in. Now we could mess around with keyframes, but I really like using the different parameter behaviors that are built into Apple Motion. So finding the scale parameter, we'll go ahead and click this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and we are going to select overshoot. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and set the start value to negative 20%. And you'll remember that the logo was shrunk down to 20%, so it's actually negating that 20%, setting it down to zero. So with our overshoot parameter, let's go ahead and move forward a few frames. I'm thinking somewhere in here, about 10 frames maybe, and we'll push O to trim it down. So now the animation will happen over 10 frames. If we push play, we can see it happening just like so. Now it might be a little bit too fast, so let's go ahead and extend that out just a few more frames somewhere in here. That's looking pretty good. Now right now it has too much of a jiggle and it looks kind of like jello. So I wanna smooth that out. And to do so, we can come down to the cycles parameter and change that over to one. So if we look at the keyframe editor, you can see now it has this nice smooth bounce here and it's looking really, really good. So everything is popping in just like so. Now we could definitely get back into the keyframe editor and animate this moving over to the side, but again, we're gonna take a look at a motion parameter behavior move. With the logo group selected, let's go into our behaviors, go down to basic motion and find move. Let's say that right when the end of the animation happens right in here. That's where we want the move parameter to start. So with this move parameter selected, push I and that will trim it down. We can go to the end of where we want this animation somewhere in here and we'll push O. So that's frame 50 for me, again, on a 60 frame timeline. Under our position settings, we can actually offset where we want the position to be. So I'm gonna just find my X position and drag this over. And I think I wanna set this over to somewhere like 400. So I'll go ahead and just type in 400. So now the logo is going to auto animate over to the side, just like so. But you'll notice how sudden it is. I want it to have a nice smooth animation, but right now it's very rigid. So let's go ahead and find our speed settings and change it from constant over to decelerate. So if we look at the keyframe editor, you can see how it has this nice curve here. If we push play, you can see how it's really fast, but then it smooths off over time. And we could actually even drag that out a little bit further. That is looking great. So now let's go ahead and add in a little subscribe button animation. So I'm gonna close off this logo group for now. I'm gonna right click and create a, no a new group and we can just call this subscribe. From there, we'll come down to our shapes, click this down arrow and select the rectangle. And I'm just gonna create a basic shape. In the shape settings, I'm going to disable the outline and we can set this over to that red color. Then from there, we can go into the geometry settings where we can find our size parameters. I'm gonna set the width to 600 and I'm going to set the height to 150. From here, we can actually drag up the roundness to get some rounded corners on this rectangle. Then with this rectangle selected, we can actually get our arrow tool and just move this into position where we want the final subscribe button to be sitting. I'm thinking somewhere in there. Now that we have that in place, let's go ahead and select the subscribe group and we are going to create a title. I will just go ahead and write in subscribe and I'll add in an exclamation mark for extra energy. From there, we can go into our settings and set this to whatever we like. I happen to like how the Roboto black looks. We can scale it up and I'm going to go ahead and set the alignment to be centered and we'll just drag this into the middle of this red box somewhere in there. I might scale it up just a little bit more. Perfect. So now because both of these are in the same group, we can move these around. We can also animate them together. So with the subscribe text selected, we'll go up to behaviors, basic motion and select move. Now I don't want this to start until right around here, somewhere in there. And I'll go ahead and actually select the whole group and push I to trim that up. So now it won't appear until right there. And from here to get the animation playing out, we can select our move parameter and change the direction from to over to from. So now it's going to move from the position that we set here 
to its final resting place. Let's go ahead and move forward until the end of the animation for our logo, somewhere in there, and I'll push O to trim that down. Now we can find our X parameter and we'll just drag this in place. So I'm gonna to go to the very beginning and just drag this so that it is directly behind the logo, somewhere in there. So if we push play, now it is moving out just like so. Let's go ahead and change the speed from constant over to decelerate. And that's looking really nice. Now I want this text to actually be behind our logo. So selecting our subscribe button, I'm gonna push command left bracket and that is going to drop it down in the layer stack. So now we have our logo on top and our subscribe text. So if we push play, it'll pop out from behind it just like so. Now I happen to like how it looks if it is fading in. So with our subscribe button selected, we'll go into our properties and find our opacity parameter. Let's set that down to zero. We'll click to add a keyframe and move forward to the end of the animation where we can drag that up to a full 100. So now if we push play, everything should be looking really dynamic. So one last feature I wanna add is to have my YouTube handle underneath the subscribe text. So jumping inside of our subscribe group, let's go ahead and actually duplicate our subscribe text. I'm gonna push Command D. Then we can go ahead and write in that to be at the final cut bro. Then we can go ahead and change our appearance to be this dark gray color. And from there we can actually change our format. I actually like how the medium looks for this particular item. And then we can go ahead and adjust where it is in relation to everything. So I'll just drag that down and we can go ahead and scale that back a bit so that it fits underneath that subscribe text really nicely. Now let's go ahead and add in a little bit of flair to this text. So selecting at the Final Cut Bro, we can go up to our behaviors, go to text basic and select arrange in. And I'll go ahead and push play and that is looking really, really nice. I am loving how this animation feels. So we have this animation pop up, it's looking great, but I wanna finish off the animation and make it tie in to whatever the video is going to be that's playing underneath. So to do that, let's go ahead and actually close up all of these groups just like so. And we are going to click to add an object and select camera. From there, we are going to actually keep everything as 2D for now. And now we can go ahead and click on this icon next to the logo and next to the subscribe text. So those objects are going to be 3D now. And you can tell because it has this three layer stack indicating that it is in 3D space. But we don't want the circles or the title background to be in 3D, that is very important. Selecting our camera, we'll go up to behaviors, camera and select framing. And I really, really love the framing tool in Apple Motion. So inside of our subscribe logo, let's go ahead and create another rectangle. And I'm just gonna zoom way in here on to our subscribe button. And we're going to create a very, very tiny rectangle inside of our C. We can go ahead and disable the outline and we can actually hide it all together in the layer stack. I'm gonna rename this to be framing. From there, selecting our framing parameter behavior, we can actually just click and drag the framing parameter into this well. Now, what that is going to do is auto animate the camera for us. So you'll see it's actually animating through the entire process, which is not what we want. We want it to be much shorter. So let's find the point where we want it to start zooming. I'm thinking somewhere around here, around the one second and 30 frame point, and I'll select the framing parameter behavior and push I to trim that down. So now that animation won't start until the end there. Now you'll notice that it's not really a smooth animation here. So let's go ahead and fix that. With our framing selected, let's change the orientation from orient to current over to orient to final. And this is actually going to drastically improve how this animation looks. Then from there, let's change the position transition up to a full 100%. Finding our transition parameter here, we can change it from constant over to accelerate. And you'll notice if you look at the keyframe editor, how that's going to start off really slow and then pick up a ton of speed right at the end, which is exactly what we want. So if we push play now, it's going to start off slow and then pick up all the speed. Now it's not happening quite as fast as I want it to. So with our framing selected, let's go ahead and trim this down. We'll find maybe the three second mark and push O. So that's going to trim it down quite a bit. Perfect, that's looking really good. So now that we have this animation of flying up to the text, I actually want it to appear like we are going through the text. With the title background selected, we're gonna push K, which creates something called a clone layer. Selecting this group, you can drag this to the very top of the layer stack. So now this is going to be on top of everything. Now, 
Let's go ahead and find the point where the animation of zooming in on the camera starts, which should be one second and 30 frames. We're actually going to find our opacity slider and set that to zero. Then we can click to add a keyframe and move forward to the end of the animation, which should be somewhere in here and drag that up to a full 100%. So if we continue through, you'll notice a couple problems. One being our clone layer is actually moving in 3D space and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and disable the 3D aspect of the clone layer. Another is that it is actually covering up the entire screen and we don't want that. We want it to be behind the subscribe text. So with the group selected that has our clone layer, we can right click and select add image mask. Then we can locate our subscribe text and drag that into the image mask. So that is actually going to tell Apple Motion that we want to cut out wherever the text is. Now you'll notice that our subscribe text has actually disappeared. That is because by default, Apple Motion disables whatever you set as an image mask. So go ahead and just re-enable that and you should be good to go. So if you push play, now you can see that our text is being revealed. Finally, here in the very last frame, we actually want to hide our image mask so that everything is perfectly clear. There are no artifacts as we move forward a frame. So let's find our image mask, select it and push O and that will trim it down. So if we push play, it should zoom right through the text, no problem. So to get this over into Final Cut Pro, all you need to do is go up to File and select Save. We can just call this Logo Animation Intro. We can find the category that we like. I'll just go ahead and throw it into my Tutorials category and push Publish. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and open up Final Cut Pro. I will just drag my logo animation from my titles down on the timeline. And if we push play, we can see that everything plays out exactly as it should. We zoom in and it reveals the underlying video. Now, if doing all this work in Apple Motion seems like far too much, then I highly recommend that you check out today's sponsor, Envato Elements, because they have hundreds of different logo animations built directly for Final Cut. Pro. So if we go to the Envato Elements website, you can see there is this video templates. We can look up Final Cut Pro and over here on the left side, there is Logo Sting. So if I select that, you can see all of these different logo animations built for Final Cut Pro and they are really easy to use. You install them just like any other motion template for Final Cut. Really, really powerful. I absolutely love Envato Elements because not only does it have hundreds of different logo animations, it has over 3 million different pieces of stock footage. It has thousands of different music tracks. It has thousands of different sound effects, graphic templates. It has over 39,000 different PowerPoint presentations. It has millions and millions of photos that you can use. It has thousands and thousands of different fonts you can use. And of course it has add-ons, web templates, and so much more. If you want to save yourself hundreds of hours of work, I highly recommend that you pick up Envato Elements. I really think that they are the most valuable asset that a creator can get today. So make sure you use the link down below to get a really great deal on Envato Elements. It does help out my channel tremendously when you use that link. So thank you so much. And with that being said, I can't wait to see you in the next one.